Okay, today's lesson is 4.2a degrees and radians, and we're going to talk about angles and going back and forth between degrees and radians. So to refresh your memory, in geometry you learned that an angle was two rays with a common endpoint. That endpoint is called the vertex, and every angle has an initial side and a terminal side. Now that angle is said to be in standard position if the initial side is the positive x-axis, terminal side can be anywhere, okay? And every angle that we measure can either be positive or negative, and that tells you the direction, just like we talk about numbers on a number line. The, if the angle is positive, then we know that it is rotating in a counterclockwise motion, and if it is negative, then it is rotating in a clockwise motion. Now, the most common unit of measure for angles is the degree with that symbol and that is equivalent to 1 360th of a full rotation about a vertex. So it's basically just taking a circle, they divided it into 360 equal parts and that's what a degree is. Okay now we have two different ways of writing a degree measure. This might be something new that you didn't do in Algebra 2 last year and that is you can either have a decimal degree form or you can have a degree minute second form or what is referred to as DMS. Okay. Now each degree, when you do degrees minutes seconds, each degree is divided into 60 minutes and each minute is divided into 60 seconds, kind of like hours. Okay. Hours, minutes, and seconds. So this first one that we're going to do, we're going to have to, you need to be able to convert back and forth. So I have one that is given to me in degrees and I'm going to change it to the DMS form, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So when you do that, this says 213.875 degrees. Well, that first part, y'all, of 213 is not going to change. But now we have to figure out how to take 0.875 and put it in terms of minutes and seconds. So the first thing we do is we're going to take 0.875 and we're going to multiply it by 60 minutes. So we're going to figure out how many minutes, how much of an hour, which is how many minutes it's going to be. And when you multiply those two, you're going to get 52.5. So when you get 52.5, 52 is how many minutes we have. And then we're going to take that part that's left over, which is 5.5, excuse me, and multiply it by 60 seconds. And that gives us 30. So that means that I have 30 seconds. So that is my conversion of the decimal degree form to DMS form. Now let's go the other way. We have, in part B, we have 89 degrees, 56 minutes, and 7 seconds. And this time we're going to change that to the decimal degree form. So again, when we do that, we're starting off with 89 degrees. Those degrees don't change on either one of them. But this time... I have 56 minutes and I basically need to change that to a decimal. So the easiest way, but over, um, on this example, we multiplied by 60 and this one, we're actually going to divide. We're going to put 56 over 60 and get a decimal. And then we're going to put seven. You can't just put seven over 60. It's seven over 60 times 60, because you got to think about the seconds and the minutes. And that gives us this decimal. And when I add those together, I get that decimal. And so if we take it to the nearest thousandths, that's three places. So I'm going to have 89.935 degrees. And that has changed. So that's, again, probably the hardest thing of this whole lesson because the other stuff you've had before. So those are degrees. The other unit of measure that we have for angles is radians. Okay. And a radian is defined as an, the arc length divided by the radius. So an angle has one radian whenever the arc length, this is the arc length, S, whenever this length and that length are the same, then we say that that angle has a measure of one radian. Okay? Now, if you want to know why this conversion um, is used or where it comes from, I'll be happy to tell you, but I, you've had it before, so you might already know. But these are our rules for conversion. If you are going to radians, then you're going to multiply by pi over 180. If you're going to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. 
So if you notice, whatever you're going to goes on top. If I want to go two radians, I put my radians on top. If I want to go two degrees, I put my degrees on top. So that's what that means. Whatever you need when you're multiplying is going to go on top. So what I'm going to show you when I do these examples, write each degree measure in radians as a multiple of pi and each radian measure in degrees. So if I have it in degrees, I want to get rid of degrees, which means I'm going to radians. So my pi radians is on top and degrees are on the bottom. And I will tell y'all that in most circumstances, I don't think it's the way in Delta math, um, if you do not have a degree symbol, then it's radians. Radian is the one unit of measure in math. We don't have to put a symbol with it. So it is understood that if there's nothing there, it's supposed to be radians. So when you put that in, I'm going to show you and tell you how you can do it on class calc that you all have access to. So in class calc, if you start off by entering the fraction bar and then you type 210 over 180, it would look like this. And most often it's going to come up with a decimal right here. But if you will hit this button right here, so normally it probably says decimal, D-E-C, you'll come up with this little menu option. And if you hit fraction, it will take it to a fraction for you. So if you notice, when you're doing any of these problems here, you can always use class calc to work with your pi values. Um, so 210 over 180 is 7 over 6. So that means that this is going to be 7 pi over 6. So you don't have to put the pi in the calculator because you just know that's going to be in your answer. But class calc is simplifying the rest of the problem for you. Okay, negative 60 degrees. I'm going to multiply that again by pi over 180 because I want radians. I want to get rid of degrees. Okay, now the thing that you got to be aware of here is this negative has no effect and it's just going to be carried down with your answer. So 60 over 180 is 1 over 3, so I'm going to have negative pi over 3. 2c, I'm going 4 pi over 3. And that means I have radians because there's no degree symbol and I want to go two degrees. So I'm going to put degrees on top and radians on the bottom. My pi is on the top and the bottom. So my calculator, I'm doing straight up four times 180 over three divided by three, or I can do three into 180, which is 60 times four, which is 240 degrees. All right. Again, last one here, negative pi over six. Okay, I have radians. I'm going two degrees, so I'm going to have degrees on top, radians on the bottom. My pi's cancel out, and 180 over 6 is going to be negative 30 degrees. Okay, so if you have want any help, <coughs> excuse me, with class count, please don't hesitate. Let me know. Okay. The next thing we got to talk about is something called coterminal angles. And they are two angles with the same initial side and same terminal side, but they have different measures. So if you look at these examples, um, this is just an estimate, okay? But if I start here and go this way, I know that I go around that this is 225 degrees. But if I start and go in a... Uh, this is a counterclockwise, so this is clockwise. If I go in a clockwise direction, that's going to be negative 135 degrees. So those are two angles. You can see they have the same initial side, same terminal side, okay? But these two angles are not the same number, okay? Over on this example, um, if I start off with alpha, and alpha looks like it's about 60 degrees, so it's 60 degrees, well, if I start here and go all the way around and then to that, because I got to end up at the same place, then I'm going to be at 60 plus 360, which is 420. So the key to this, if you can see the difference between these two numbers in both of these cases is 360 degrees, which is what you need to know to find coterminal angles. Okay, if you're working with degrees, they're going to be a difference of 360 if you're working with radians, it's going to be a difference of 2 pi. And this right here is telling you all of the angles. And you're going to see this is all of the radians. As I do these um, last two problems, you will see um, how that applies. So this first one says, identify all the angles that are coterminal with the given angle. 
So all the angles that are coterminal with negative 30 degrees are going to be negative 30 degrees plus 360 in. Okay. All the angles that are going to be coterminal with 3 pi over 4 are going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi in. Okay. Now, the next thing we have to do is find and draw one positive and one negative coterminal angle with the given angle. So when I do this first, negative 30 degrees, negative means that I'm going in um, a clockwise direction. So negative 30 degrees is going to be somewhere around there. So that's my negative 30 degrees. Okay. And if I want one positive angle, then that means that I can start at that zero, okay, and go in a counterclockwise direction, okay? And the measure of that angle is going to be negative 30 plus 360 degrees, and that's going to be 330 degrees. If I need one that is negative, then I'm going to go in the clockwise direction, so I'm going to start and go that way. And in that case, I'm going to have negative 30 minus 360 degrees, which is going to give me negative 390 degrees. So each time when you're looking at these, y'all, it's either adding or subtracting 360 degrees when you are working your problems. Now, over here on 3B, where I have 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 I know is about right there. So that's going to give me 3 pi over 4. Where's my 3 pi? There it is. All right, and if I want a positive one, then I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go around, and I need 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. Now, I'm going to show you again how do you do this and how class calc can help you. You don't need the pi's. So if you go to class calc and you enter 3 fourths plus 2, okay, see that? 3 fourths plus 2, and then click on this button and go to the fraction, it's going to give you 11 over 4. So that means that my radian measure is going to be 11 pi over 4. So I took the pi out to add it on class calc and then put the pi back in. And you can do this on any calculator, but I'm just pointing out everybody has access to class calc, so everybody can do it. If you have a different calculator and want to know how to do it on yours, I'll be happy to help you, so let me know. Okay, and then the last one, we need a negative, so I'm going to start at the positive x-axis and go in a clockwise direction, and when I do, I'm going to have 3 pi over 4 minus 2 pi, and that gives me negative 5 pi over 4, and that is all that there is to degrees and radians. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us or come see us. Thank you so much, and y'all have a great day.